Shop and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. So happy to be here with you inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios. I hope you're having yourselves a great day and a great week here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. We are always happy to be here with you, and we're going to have a fantastic show set up for you here today. Very, very much looking forward to it. As you know, every single Wednesday is Dolphin Time, and Dolphin Time comes to you at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Set it and keep it and have it all throughout the year. Dolphin Time, every Wednesday, 9 a.m. Eastern Time, exclusively on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Every first and third Wednesday, we get to tell the stories of... Uh, every first, third Wednesday, AD and DT, uh, Athletics Director Bob Beretta and myself, Dan Tortora, giving you an inside look at athletics with the leader of athletics, on the Heights with Bob Beretta, and of course, always appreciate the fact that we get to dive into a bunch of different pieces, including being the exclusive first conversation with Bob Beretta anywhere about realignment and reclassification and the fact that the LeMoyne College Dolphins are looking at the potential of either staying at D2 or moving to Division One or Division Three. So something very exciting you should go check out on youtube.com backslash wakeupcalldt, as well as on the facebook.com backslash wake up call dt and the moin tab on wake up call dt.com every second and fourth wednesday we have the dolphin dive during dolphin time wednesdays at 9 a.m eastern time and the dolphin dive features student athletes coaches administration as well as uh, future dolphins and alumni telling us why Lemoyne and giving their story, their journey, their way. And today we will be joined by our very special guest for the first time ever in our exclusive multimedia marketing partnership. We'll be joined by Jeff Lonzak, the head coach for Lemoyne College Dolphins men's tennis, as well as women's tennis, a successful coach in both over the previous six seasons here. He's been, this is his seventh season with men's and women's tennis in the previous six seasons having tremendous records on both sides, both the, the men's side, 58 and 40, and then on the women's side, 70 and 38, coming into this season where he has the men at 16 and 1 on a 16-match winning streak and the women at 13 and 4. So successful now, successful through these six seasons, successful as a player, he will tell his story in just a couple minutes. And then after that, we'll take a look around the sports world as the WNBA just had their draft and the NBA, the NHL jumping into the playoffs, Major League Baseball in full swing, pun fully intended. And we'll do all of that in hour number one. In hour number two, as you know, for those of you that are here with us on Wake Up Call religiously, and we appreciate that, you know that we have a new video that comes to you in hour number two as we have so much work that we do in the world of fantasy football. And so we always separate Wednesday into two videos on our video stream. So on youtube.com backslash wake up call DT and on facebook.com backslash wake up call DT, we'll end this video at 10 a.m. Eastern time, start a new one with Mike Safka at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Ecstatic to have Mike on the show. And we are going to be breaking down the NFL draft with about two weeks to go before we have draft night one. That's going to be on Thursday, April 28th. So here, 15 days out, we're going to be talking about the quarterbacks and the running backs, uh, names you need to know in the draft. Uh, very excited about that. And three out of the four uh, top names quarterback-wise in this year's NFL draft, I have seen play live in person. So very excited about that. Got to see Malik Willis, Kenny Pickett, and Desmond Ritter. So we'll be discussing quarterbacks and running backs as we break down the NFL draft for 2022 with Mike Sofka of Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com. And that'll be coming to you in hour number two here where sports meets life. As I said, we're inside of the Cafe Kubal studios. Want to give a proud thanks to Cafe Kubal for all they do in our community, for being the local flavor. And a cup of coffee goes a long way. A cup of coffee, a cup of chai, a cup of tea in general goes a very long way in giving back to our community and giving back to a company that built itself here and has continued to grow and expand in central and upstate New York with locations on 3501 James Street, 324 West Water Street, 401 South Salina Street, all in Syracuse, inside of Galisano's Children's Hospital in downtown Syracuse, and of course on the corner of Route 11 and Taft Road at Sweetheart Corners in North Syracuse in their drive through location. And you can also find them out in Manlius, 
on 343 Fayette Street in Manliest, New York, in their giant behemoth of a brown striped building, which I call the Manliest Welcome Center. You could find Cafe Kubal there in their double decker cafe. And of course, they have a fantastic expanded parking lot now, so you can check that out as well. So make sure you head off to Cafe Kubal, any one of the locations today, and show them some love as you support our community of Central and Upstate New York, and you support local. So with that being said, we're going to take a quick step aside for a fast break. When we come back, we will be joined for the first time ever by Jeff Lonzak, the Lemoyne College men's and women's tennis head coach. Very excited to have him on for men's and women's tennis to speak on his success and the fact that here in our community of Central and Upstate New York, we have one of the top seven in the United States, top seven singles players. One of the top seven in the nation is the coach at Lemoyne. Very excited to speak with Jeff Lonzak right after this fast break where sports meets life on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Stay with us and follow us back right after our step aside here to hear from our terrific partners in Central and Upstate New York. We appreciate you and thank you so much and cannot wait to jump into this Dolphin Dive on a very sunny Wednesday. Avicoli's, located on the corner of Route 57 and Wetzel Road in Liverpool, New York, has been your trusted neighbor for decades. Located just steps from Liverpool High School, we're happy to have the Liverpool Warriors on-site, on-location broadcast at Avicoli's through Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora every single month, featuring student athletes, coaches, and administration throughout the year from Liverpool High School. Head out to Avicoli's today on the corner of Route 57 and Wetzel Road in Liverpool, New York, open Tuesday through Sunday for lunch, dinner, and drinks. We'd love to see you out there. And of course, you can call them at 315-622-5100 for takeout delivery and catering. That's 315-622-5100. And also find them on myavicolis.com. That's myavicolis.com. Having peace of mind when you're out of town, that your furry loving friend is safe and sound, means taking them to Canine Campground. Because we all know that when it comes to the love of our pets, it goes well beyond the call of duty to make sure they're safe and sound. Right, Lily? <laughs> So take a ride to 242 Johnson Street in East Syracuse, New York, and see Canine Campground and where your dog will be staying, in the classic cabin, the executive cabin, the grand cabin, or of course, the luxury cabin, because if you know Lily, you know she loves luxury. <laughs> now you don't have to wait to the last minute to find a family member or a friend that'll take your dog for a few days. Call Canine Campground at 315-299-4013. That's 315-299-4013. Their drop-off and pickup times are Monday through Sunday. Check K9Campground.com for more information. That's the letter K, the number 9, and campground spelled with a K, dot com. K9Campground.com. When you're going out of town, bring your dog to K9 Campground. PB&J's Lunchbox, the food truck that you love finding all throughout Central and Upstate New York, now has a street side cafe. So when you're craving their traditional favorites as well as their out-of-box amazing menu items, you can now head to 663 Old Liverpool Road in Liverpool, New York, located just minutes from the highway, the thruway, Destiny USA, and Onondaga Lake Parkway, PB&J's Lunchbox Street Side Cafe is there for you Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., serving breakfast, lunch, and and dinner all throughout the day. Get breakfast for dinner, dinner for lunch, whatever you fancy, including their award-winning grilled peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Find them at 663 Old Liverpool Road in Liverpool, New York. PB&J's Lunchbox, where we love to know what's in your lunchbox. As a patient, what do we want? To be cared for, to be listened to, and to have someone walk us through the process on our path 
to Victory. Victory Sports Medicine and Orthopedics does all of those things beautifully with Dr. Mark Petropoli leading the team on 791 West Genesee Street in Skinny Atlas, New York, located minutes from beautiful Skinny Atlas Lake. Whatever your injury may be from head to toe, preventative care, rehab, physical therapy, laser therapy, and surgery are all available at Victory Sports Medicine and Orthopedics, where they care about us, they listen to us, and they understand that everyone's path to victory is a little bit different. Let them help you on yours by calling 315-685-7544 to make your appointment today. That's 315-685-7544. And find out more information at victorysportsmedicine.com. back here to wake up call with dan tortora inside of the cafe two ball studios and we are here on wednesdays at 9 a.m eastern time to start off the broadcast what we like to call dolphin time and dolphin time every first and third wednesday is ad and dt with athletics director bob beretta and myself dan tortora every second and fourth wednesday we bring you the dolphin dive where we dive into the stories of coaches student athletes administration future dolphins as well as alumni and today we get to put the spotlight clear right on men's and women's tennis at Lemoyne College for the Dolphins. And I'm ecstatic to have the head coach of the men's and women's tennis team here, Jeff, Jeff Lonzak, with me. So, Jeff, how are we doing today? Ah, I'm doing well. Thank you so much, Dan, for having me on. Absolutely. And, and Jeff, you know, this is year seven. And year number seven. Year number seven. So looking back at your time, I want to go all the way back to, to, to seven years ago, back to 2015. What was it about Lemoyne that made you feel like this could be a good fit for you? Yeah, for me, I mean, it's, it wasn't really much of a decision at all, to be honest. Uh, I'm an alum. I played yeah. here. Uh, it always seemed like uh, the place that I was supposed to kind of be and, and come back home in a way. Um, yeah, and it's just been it's just been like a total embrace and, and family oriented atmosphere. It's been everything for me personally. You know, and you talk about that uh, being an alum. It's a no brainer. Uh, you know, some people, people say, say that, that other people, people may be a little uneasy about it, right? You know, I went there, played there, you know, are, how are they going to take me, so to speak? You know, I, I know coaches that have played quarterbacks in different places and they, they wonder, you know, what it's going to be like. So uh, did you ever think that for a second? Did you ever think, hey, if I come back here and I coach, my legacy could be changed or, or were you invigorated by it? No, I was invigorated. You know, I mean, I, 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 my experience as a player was amazing. Um, and I, I was, a, you know, as a player, as a captain, you're able to kind of, I guess, you know, affect things at, at, at that level, you know? So then, so then thinking about it as a coach, and I've done a lot of time as an assistant at different places and Lemoyne, I, I thought that maybe my, my way of being, my own personal beliefs and kind of my morals, I guess, could affect the program in a larger scale. Yeah, you know, and we look at the fact that uh, you started playing uh, collegiately for tennis over at OCC, and you were a three-time All-America selection there. And so, and then the uh, NJCAA National Championship at first doubles and runner-up at second singles. The success right out of the gate there at OCC, bring me into that and just what you could say about, you know, your time spent there also in central New York and, you know, having success immediately. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we had a great program there. I was lucky enough to play for uh, coach LaRose. Um, yeah, it was, it for me, that decision of coming to Syracuse, Syracuse was, was the best one because it exposed me to OCC and Syracuse kind of the, 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 goal oriented aspect of OCC trying to get better every day, you know, running my own practices outside of team practice um, is what I, is what I brought to Lemoyne and having success there, you know, at, at a young age, you know, I, I honestly, I, I don't, I, 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 my players probably don't even really know uh, um, kind of what I, what I did there or whatever, what I accomplished. Cause I, I don't bring it up much, but uh yeah, I mean, it was a humbling experience for me, and it's, it's kind of served as a, a backbone to, to everything that I do. 
Yeah, I mean, looking at, like I said, the NJCAA National Championship at first doubles and then won the national title at first singles in 2000, both at OCC. I mean, national title, that, that is not a small feat. Bring me into what it took as a tennis player to do that. I mean, do you have moments that you can go back to within those national championships, within those national titles? And, and you know, if so, what are they? And, and, and I, secondly, what does it take to, to – withstand everything to get there i mean this is this is a giant i mean I, it's kind of, it's left me speechless because i'm looking at one not one but two and what you did in, in such a, a small you know area of time at occ because you know it's only a couple of years of being there i mean you're a national champion and i want to know how you did it and and what you remember about it yeah so i mean for me, that first year, I got, I got, there was a lot of modeling going on. The best player at our school was a, a, you know, a guy from Germany named Yanni Bujan. Um, I got to see him and, and how great he was. And, and, and what that did for me was after he graduated, because he was one year older than me, I, I started to say to myself, okay, how am I going to get to that level? And it started you know, in the kitchen with nutrition. It started uh, you know, putting in the miles, miles on, on the bike, bike on, on, on the stairs, like, and, and obviously – a tennis tournament every weekend. So I, I wanted to go from my freshman year where I was second in the nation at, at second singles to the best in the nation at first singles. And it, it was a, a daily process and a grind. Um, it was a funny experiencing. It was a funny experience accomplishing that goal because it was as if it was just like the, the deepest breath I ever took in my life. If that makes any sense. Um, you know, you, you you train so hard, you go crazy trying, driving yourself nuts to accomplish this one thing. And then you do. And it's just like, it's almost like a sigh of relief. So it, it was, it was a beautiful experience. I could, I could sit here and tell you everything about that match, how, how far I was down. I mean, the guy I played every round, if, if, if you, you know, but I mean, it, it was just, it, yeah, it was, it was a beautiful thing. And so you, you move on from there and you head off to Le Moyne. What was it about Lemoyne after playing at OCC and being so successful at OCC? What did Lemoyne sell that you thought, hey, you know what, this makes the most sense for me? Well, to be honest, I, I went to uh, to University of Delaware after after I won my national title, um, and, and 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 that place was a little bit different for me. I, I could compete at that level, no doubt about it. Um, I guess kind of the individual attention that maybe I needed at that time wasn't really there um and then you know for Lemoyne after that was like it was like I, I knew the coach he was he was a, an old friend kind of um and and just the way they accepted me because I to be honest at Delaware I didn't I didn't I didn't do well academically so it, it ended up being one of these things where did anybody want me to to, to go there and, and play for him and, and the way I felt at Lemoyne was welcome yeah. Um, they, they were willing to give me a second chance and, you know, I, I, I thought I could turn things around for myself academically and, and on the tennis court and, and, and yeah, it was, it was great. Well, I mean, you said you didn't have the individual, individual attention you really wanted at Delaware. What was it academically that, that you just felt, felt like, like you weren't clicking there? Yeah, I wasn't connected to the team, um, was, was a bit of it. I think, you know, there, there was a little bit of a, a stigma attached to me being a Juco kid, um, and my coach, like she, she was a great coach, uh, but but she had a full a, a team with the full amount of scholarships on the women's side, and yeah. then none on the men. So there was a little bit of a, a push and pull there, and, and her time, you know, maybe spent with the men wasn't quite as great as the women, understandable. Um, but yeah, so so there was there was just a little bit of a disconnect. So you decided to come off to Lemoyne and have the opportunity to continue, you know, academically and athletically at LeMoyne and uh, Northeast 10 conference, uh, all conference, uh, second team in doubles, third team in singles, uh, ranked as high as number nine in the Northeast region. And I believe it, as it currently stands, you're ranked seventh in the United States for the 40 and under <laughs> age group in singles. So, I mean, uh. Pretty, pretty incredible that uh, you're in the top 10 in the nation still. So uh, bring me into your time at LeMoyne and then tell me how you, how old are you today? I am 41. 
So, and by my math, I was correct. So how in the heck do you, do you, you know, looking at the 40 and under group all time, how are you ranked seventh in the nation? So tell me about Lemoyne and how you're in the top seven in the country when we look at, you know, the history of tennis in the United States, 40 and under age group in singles, number seven in the nation. Yeah. So, I mean, my time at Lemoyne, once again, uh, my, do- my old doubles partner from OCC kind of came with me. So Yanni was there. So yeah. our, our time together as a doubles team, I mean, we, we were very good. So that motivated me to kind of keep my singles game going as well. And, and um, you know, having Steve Underwood as a coach was a blessing. I mean, we're very close today. Um, so it, it, it was, it was perfect. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, our team maybe wasn't necessarily as talented as we are now, but uh, the work ethic was there. We, we, we put in the time, we, we tried to get better. Um, and we, and you know, things were different back then. The conference was, was different. We had Brian in there. Assumption was a powerhouse. Um, so it, it was a really amazing experience playing for Steve and, and, and I loved it. Now today, um, being, being 41. Um, so after, after Lemoyne, I took a little bit of time away from the sport to try to kind of, I guess, figure out where I fit. And it, it wasn't too long for me to realize that it was on a tennis court in some way, shape or form coaching and playing. So yeah, I, I had, um, I had some, I had a shoulder surgery in, uh, when I was 33, so eight years ago. Um, and that kind of springboarded me to say, okay, let's really take nutrition and, and training very seriously. And I tried to start a training for the 35s. So, um, yeah, I, I played um, in a couple of tournaments. I played in a tournament in Philadelphia, and then I went down south and played in Florida, a couple of national events, and I had some success. So I kind of kept that snowball rolling, I guess, and, and um, yeah, up until the 40s. And, and I, I've, had a, I've had a little success, but, you know, I've done pretty well. Um, it, it's one of those things for me being a little five foot seven guy um, that I still got to work my legs, man. If I don't have my legs, you know. It, it's a problem. And, and, and honestly, like things like, you know, bad weather and, and wind and, and like tough surfaces, those things are great for me because it gives everybody else problems. And, and me, I, I'm used to problems. So I figure out ways around them. So playing on grass is, is something that's great for me and a lot of people don't like. So I, I was able to get some wins there. And um, yeah, I guess improve that national ranking. And I love that you mentioned your height a couple times because I'm five foot eight. So it makes, it makes me feel good. So <laughs> with that, <laughs> for sure. that being said here on the dolphin dive with Jeff Lonzak yeah, here with us, the men's and women's tennis head coach for the Lemoyne dolphins uh, jumping into Lemoyne and your history there. in just a second, I do want to make note of this. You were an assistant at Manlius Pebble Hill, 2005, to 2007, came back to Lemoyne in 2007, went to OCC in 2008, to 2012, Hamilton College 2013, Colgate 2014. So experience at different divisional levels as well as NCAA and NJCAA and going back to both your alma maters. And, you know, no big deal with all the success you had as a player at OCC in 2008, a national title in the NJCAA. So to go to OCC and win a national title as a player, win it as a coach, pretty incredible. And, you know, your your road to, to get – to the back to Lemoyne is is interesting because this is your third time at Lemoyne and your third role at Lemoyne from player to assistant to head coach. Yeah, it's it's uh yeah it's it's all the way it was supposed to be. You know, when I think about things like this and and you, and you go through life and you think about decisions, I say to myself, what decision? There was no decision. It was always supposed to be this way. I was supposed to be the head coach at Lemoyne. I was supposed to come back and, 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 and work things out at different schools. And it's just, I mean, it's been a blessing and, and you know, I'm, I'm blessed to be here and lucky to, to, to be a part of this program with an unbelievable set of administrators and, and fellow coaches. It's, it's just so cool to be here. What, you know, when you have all those different places that you got to coach at, what did that do to building the foundation of who you wanted to be as a head coach? Yeah. So, I mean, for me, one of the biggest things that it gave me was, was a structure. It said, okay, like this is the way that we're going to practice and this is what we're going to do to lead up to matches. And, and right now the way it is at Lemoyne, it, it, it's like breathing for my programs. They, they don't, I don't, I mean, 
in some ways I barely need to be there because these, these guys and girls are so motivated and, and they know the program and the ins and outs of it. So, I mean, the biggest thing from learning from different people along the way, Hamilton College, Colgate, OCC, was to, 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 have, to have a structure in place, to have a culture in place, to have a, a way of being, kind of almost a way of breathing within the program that can permeate throughout it and it almost acts as a unit unto itself. You know, and Jeff, uh, coming into this season on the men's side, uh, 58 and 40, on the women's side, as head coach, 70 and 38, substantial here. You have you had almost 20 more wins on the men's side than losses, and 70 to, to 38 on the women's side. It, it's You had talked about going to Delaware and having a coach that was overseeing both and right maybe leaned more on one side. How do you balance having two teams? I mean, one team is enough work, like you said, you know, but you trust your student athletes. They go out there and do a lot by yourself, and you feel like, you know, do I even need to be here at times because they're – so structured and disciplined, but how do you balance being the uh, the men's head coach for tennis and the women's head coach for tennis, and not only balance it, but find incredible success with both? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a challenge, to be honest. Um, and, and with the split seasons, the women main, main season in the fall, the men's se- main season in the spring, I get so little exposure to the men in the fall and so little exposure to the women in in the uh, spring, be, just because of the NCAA rules, you know, the, the 25 meetings, pl- practices and all that. So, I mean, it, it's a balancing act. I have to be around them. That That's a big thing to make sure that we're around each other as much as we can. So we maximize the amount of practices that we have. Um, also, like the, the tennis is such an individual sport. So for me to say to, you know, my number one male, my number one female player, oh, OK, like here, here's what we have to do on a daily basis. I need, I need information from them about how they feel. Certain people, they can play six days in a row and then play a match, and it's great. Other people, they need three days. They need a day off in between. There's certain things that need. So I, I have to be very flexible in terms of the individual. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I love it because I get a chance to learn myself from my players and, and, and the ins and outs of their lives, their training. Because, uh, you know, we're, we're sitting here and, and, I, and we're trying to I'm trying I'm introducing different ways of, of, of training, you know, our strength program, things of that nature. Half of these players have that stuff in, in place and they're doing it on their own. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 awesome, really. You know, and, and this season is is no different than your overall six seasons going into this. And looking at where you are currently right now, women's tennis is 13 and four men's tennis is 16 and one on a 16 game winner, 16 match winning streak. Uh, bring me into to that, you know, this season specifically with the women's tennis squad being 13 and four. And then on the men's side of it, another fantastic record. But after that first loss of a match of the season, 16 straight, just running the table and both of them rank nationally right now. Yeah. So uh, uh, first to start with the women. Yeah. I mean, they, they had an incredible fall, the first ever uh, conference championship regular season. That was huge. 10 and 0. Um, I we're positioned right now to, to make a, to make a regional, to make a, to make a tournament berth. So we're all, ex- we're very excited. Uh, we got a good one against Niagara on Friday and that'll be a, a real test. Um, but yeah, we're, we're positioned in the right way. Yeah. So, I mean, that first, that first match we lost against Niagara, you know, it, it was one of those situations where I had a women's match the same day, one of the first matches I ever missed. So it was it was a tough experience. I, I think after that and then after the next match, there was kind of like a, a, a pull in by the captains and, and, and they're thinking to themselves, you know, this this just isn't this isn't what, what we're about. So. I mean, they they brought it together. They figured it out. You know, we were lucky enough to have a grad a grad transfer, uh, a Manny Riggy uh, jump in, and, and Peter Hatton transfer from West Point. And they've just kind of they've brought their individual nature to the squad, and it's been fun. And um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're to be honest, the men the men are a buzzsaw right now. They're they're just they're just a wrecking crew, and and I, I don't know. I I just have to try to keep them motivated. It's, it's really awesome. You said you have to try to keep them motivated in closing. How do you corral a team that feels like they can't be beaten? How do you make sure they continue to stay focused? 
Yeah, that's 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 a good question. I mean, that's kind of what I talked about a little bit before. Um, keeping with the program, you know, and, and also, you know, we're we're beat up. I mean, we played a lot of matches, so I have to I have to look at the individual and say, okay, this guy needs rest. This guy needs to go. We get we got to be we got to be solid trying to field the ball every day if we can. Um, yeah, and, and sticking with sticking with I guess the recipe that's brought us success in the first place. Yeah, you know, and, and these teams have been absolutely incredible. And I want to give you, you know, all the credit in the world for the work that you've put forward in the six previous seasons and here in season seven and the balance of both. It's one thing to have one good tennis program. It's another thing to have both be successful. And for you to be the coach, I don't know how you do it, Jeff. I don't know how you balance it all. But <laughs> if you could if you could tell the people that are watching and listening, maybe some ingredients to success for coaching and leadership from your world ah uh, yeah well i mean look i mean for me you know it, it took me a while to, to really be myself and, and and that's the thing like for me in my program like i i have to try to be the most authentic version of myself i'm honest which isn't always pleasurable to people um including my players you know, I, I, I got a self-deprecating sense of humor, you know, so, I, you know, we, we make fun of each other um, and we need to, you know, we need to laugh because if we're sitting there grinding every single day and every match is so important, if we can't laugh at ourselves, like that's that's an issue. Um, and, and for me, the, the leadership aspect of it, you know, I'm, I'm just just like any good captain. I'm the first one there and the last one to leave. And and, and if we need anything like. I want to be relied on from from every single person. Um, it kind of becomes a little bit of a of a control freak mentality, and all coaches are. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I want my guys to, to to say, "Hey, coach, like help me out with housing." Hey, coach, um, you know, I, I, one of my one of my professors has given me extra credit if you can email them about my wins. Oh, great, yeah, I'll do it. You know, so so it's it's kind of this. Uh, this this way that we can all be ourselves and then you know i mean i think a big part of leadership is modeling so i mean and my players can tell you that uh i hope i hope they looked up to me in some ways that coming from jeff lonzak here with us on wake up call with dan tortora inside of the cafe Kubal studios this has been a spotlight on men's and women's tennis at lemoyne college inside of our golf and dive diving into the stories of the wonderful people that connect with our community here in central and upstate New York and all around the world. Jeff, why, why Lemoyne? What do you say to the people that are looking to be, looking to find a home, looking to find a place? You were looking for a home. You said when you came back to coach, it was a no brainer. Why Lemoyne? What is the message when you're recruiting men's and women's tennis? One word, it's family. You know, I mean, that's, that's, that's what we are. That's what we're, what we're about in athletics, you know, in administration, the professors, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a family organization. And if, if anybody needs help on an individual level, I mean, we, we, we make it happen. So, I mean, it, it, it's family at Lemoyne. That coming from Jeff Lanza, I couldn't say it better than that. The Finn family, and as Bob Beretta likes to say, family with a PH. So, uh, as always, uh, I definitely love telling the stories of Lemoyne and our exclusive multimedia marketing partnership and giving you a spotlight that you've deserved for a very long time. So, Jeff, thank you for the work that you're doing. Thank you for the leadership. Thank you for continuously being a part of our community and coming back. And, and thank you for staying. And the last note I would have to say is also selfishly, because my hometown is, is Syracuse in Central New York, thank you for giving us one of the top 10 tennis players in the country <laughs> under 40. So uh, thank you for that. But no, above, above everything... Thank you for the work that you're doing. It doesn't go underappreciated, and we really uh, we're spoiled. So thank you for that. Uh, thank you so much, Dan, for having me on. I really appreciate it.
In these unique times, there are those in our community that give us a sense of normalcy and positivity. Pizza Man on 50 Oswego Street in Baldwinsville has been here for you for over 35 years and is here now. Call 315-638-1234 or order online at pizzamanbville.com to bring those familiar tastes into your home. And remember to come see our monthly on-site broadcasts centered around the community and our Baldwinsville Beats. Pizza Man in Baldwinsville. Any way you slice it, they are always here for you. This is Jimmer Sikowski, owner-operator of Chick-fil-A Cicero, 7916 Brewerton Road in Cicero, right in front of the Home Depot. I had a deep feeling that God wanted me to do something bigger with my life and to help people, help others. I kept putting Chick-fil-A in my life, and I realized as I was going through the franchise selection process that uh, positively impacting the lives of others was really core to what we do here at Chick-fil-A. First of all, it starts with the food. The food is brought in fresh daily, and we bring in local produce. We prepare to order in the kitchen. We hand bread our chicken. We hand spin our milkshakes. It's it's great food. It doesn't taste like fast food. I, I think the second thing is is the way people feel when they come in a Chick Fil A restaurant. It's different. We we try to treat people with intentional kindness here, which is very different and deeper than good customer service. And so, you know, I think it feels remarkable for most people to come in a Chick Fil A restaurant. And then lastly. The impact that we try to have in the community is very different. It's a big part of the expectation of every operator of a Chick-fil-A restaurant is that they're actively engaged in their community, they're a leader in the community, and they're, they're making a difference. When they realize that what we're striving to do is to shine a little light in their life, that's a very, very different experience uh, than you will have at any other quick service restaurant. And it's that remarkable experience that I think people will emotionally connect with. I'm George Townsend of Honda City with some good advice from buying a new car. The true cost of owning a new car is determined by the appraised value when you trade it. No vehicle appraises higher than a Honda. Next, look for low APRs and deep discounts. You also want low maintenance costs and great fuel economy. That's why my advice to you is to buy a new Honda. Looking pre-owned, visit our Honda Certified Used Car Center. Honda City, 7140 Henry Clay Boulevard, Liverpool, or hondacity-cny.com. corporate purpose at Chick-fil-A is to glorify God by being faithful stewards of all that's entrusted to us and to positively influence all those who come in contact with Chick-fil-A. And what became increasingly clear from our success in Cicero is that people love Chick-fil-A. And also, I think we recognize that, you know, we had a great opportunity to grow the brand and grow our platform. I felt incredibly grateful when I was you know, selected to be a Chick-fil-A operator. I think what it's meant for me, what I've come to realize on a very deep level is that this is a calling for me. It's not a career. It's not a job. The Lord called me to be a Chick-fil-A operator and to use these restaurants to glorify Him and to positively influence other people. I'm blessed. I'm very blessed. Head to Chick-fil-A Clay on 3974 State Route 31 in Liverpool, New York. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on wakeupcalldt.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on mixlr.com inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios is where you're listening. You're watching on facebook.com backslash wakeupcalldt, facebook.com backslash live now dt, and on youtube.com backslash wakeupcalldt. So however you're connected with the show, we thank you so much for tuning in to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora inside of these Cafe Kubal studios. Folks, I cannot tell you enough, Cafe Kubal is such a special and unique place. And from their coffees to their chais and their teas to everything that they offer you there, the chocolate chip banana bread, their chocolate chip cookies, their incredible uh, pastries in and of itself, which have really become their own staple. And then on top of all of that, the sandwiches that they offer and all of the 
breakfast and everything that they have throughout the day at Cafe Kubal is second to none. Every single cafe is different. So going to Cafe Kubal in and of itself is supporting local and supporting Central New York. And then each Cafe Kubal has its own personality. So it makes it fun, keeps it interesting, keeps the scenery ever changing, and just a really smart business model for Matt Goddard and the team. So make sure you head out to Cafe Kubal today on the corner of Route 11 and Taft Road at Sweetheart Corners in their drive through location in North Syracuse, out in Manlius on 343 Fayette Street, and of course inside of Galasano's Children's Hospital. We thank them for everything they're doing for our kids so very much. We appreciate you, and I can't say enough. And then uh, 3501 James Street, 324 West Water Street, and 401 South Salina Street. We're going to be out at Cafe Kubal at uh, multiple locations this month. Very, very much looking forward to it. Very excited about all the shows we're going to be bringing you from on-site, on-location. And those shows are going to be during our normally scheduled broadcast, so uh, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Obviously, Monday through Friday, you're listening and watching Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora and all the channels I mention. 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios. We'll be at Cafe Kubal for each of the next two weeks. We're going to be there at least uh, for uh, Tuesday, April 19th and Monday, April 25th. So very excited about that. And make sure you stay close to our social media to find out how you can come out, grab a cup of coffee and see us and who's going to be coming out with us as a special guest. Facebook at Wake Up Call DT, Twitter at Call DT and Instagram at Wake Up Call underscore DT. So we look forward to seeing you out there and having some fun together. With that being said, uh, before we jumped into hour number two in the Fantasy Football Power Hour, where we're jumping into the draft and speaking on the NFL draft all the way through, we have this Wednesday, we have next Wednesday, and then the Wednesday after, which is the day before the draft. So today we're going to be talking about quarterbacks and running backs inside of this year's NBA draft, or NFL draft, pardon me. And so we'll have our NFL draft coverage in hour two today in its own video on YouTube and Facebook, both.com backslash wake up call DT. So we'll do that and we'll have quarterbacks and running backs today. And then next week we'll run the gamut with other positions, right? We'll head to the defensive side and talk about some other pieces as well and wide receivers. And then the following week we'll do our mock draft day where we will spend that show giving you our mock draft on the eve of the actual NFL draft because we'll be able to do our mock draft on Wednesday, April 27th. And then the draft is going to be the 28th, 29th, and 30th. So very excited about that and bringing all of that to you this week. Like I said, NFL draft coverage, quarterbacks and running backs next week. We run the gamut with other positions. The week after that, we're going to jump right into our mock draft. And then Mike and I are going to do a draft cast of the draft itself. So from here on out with the Fantasy Football Power Hour, proudly presented by the Wildcat Sports Pub. It's going to be pre-draft by position and looking at different elements of who's out there to take. So we're going to do pre-draft by position. We're going to talk about team needs of each of the 32 NFL franchises. We're going to do our mock draft, then we're going to do our draft cast, and then we'll give our thoughts after the draft. So plenty of stuff coming up here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora inside of the Fantasy Football Power Hour, which is Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time, proudly presented by the Wildcat Sports Pub. You don't want to miss anything, including today's jump-off video of our draft coverage, and that's going to be happening at 10 a.m. Eastern Time here. And I cannot wait to have Mike Sofka, my co-host of all things fantasy football, here with us from Hall of Fame HalloFameFantasyFootball.com. So before we get there, though, I do want to make mention of a look around the sports world and what's going on right now as we have a convergence of a lot of different things happening in a major way. And so a lot of of cool stuff uh, coming up. The USFL is going to be kicking off their season, which I'm very excited about that. They've been able to scrimmage a bit here, which has been cool. Uh, The USFL is going to have their first games of their emergence here. Their games are on Fox, NBC, USA and Fox Sports 1, which is great because that means that uh, we have the opportunity to see these games very easily. They're very accessible, which is a big part of a good business model, especially when you're bringing a league into existence or bringing a league back, right? So uh, we have our first game this Saturday, the day before Easter, Easter Eve, 
if you will, Saturday, April 17th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. The New Jersey Generals and the Birmingham Stallions will kick off on Fox and on NBC. On Easter, at noon Eastern Time, we'll have the Houston Gamblers and the Michigan Panthers on NBC. And then that same day, Sunday at 4 p.m., so we have an Easter jump off here. We have a triple header on Easter. Sunday at 4 p.m. on the USA Network, we'll have the Philadelphia Stars and the New Orleans Breakers. And at 8 p.m. Eastern Time this Easter, we'll have on Fox Sports 1, the Tampa Bay Bandits and the Pittsburgh Maulers. So plenty of awesome stuff coming up, and I'm, I'm excited to cover it. So a big shout-out to the USFL. And then to uh, take a look at the fact that the NHL is obviously heading here into the postseason world I can't even believe the NHL season has come and gone already regular season-wise. I feel like it was just starting back up again, and now it's already through. And so to take a look at the uh, the NHL and where things are right now as far as the schedule for these postseason games, which I'm very, very much uh, excited to have here for you here, uh, we will be starting things off here uh, soon and I cannot wait for that. We still have uh, plenty of of games here to go. I want to take a look at the current standings here as we take a look at the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs and see uh, where everything where everything is currently at here. So uh, the Florida Panthers and the Toronto Maple Leafs are going out of the Atlantic Division of the Eastern Conference. They have made it. In the Metropolitan, we have the Carolina Hurricanes and the New York Rangers. In the Western Conference, we have the Colorado Avalanche in the Central. And in the Pacific, it's wide open. So uh, there's plenty of room left for teams to find their place in this as we head toward the postseason here. Hard to believe, like I said, we're coming to the end of the regular season. Bunch of teams still alive, though. In the Eastern Conference, the Tampa Bay Lightning, who are a two-time champion back-to-back here of these last couple seasons, uh, winning back-to-back championships. Tampa Bay is still alive. The Boston Bruins are still alive in the Atlantic. In the Metropolitan Division of the Eastern Conference, we have the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Washington Capitals, the New York Islanders, and the Columbus Blue Jackets are all still alive. And in the Western Conference, it really is the wild, wild west. Outside of the Colorado Avalanche, it is wide open. The Minnesota Wild, the St. Louis Blues, the Nashville Predators, the Dallas Stars, the Winnipeg Jets, all still very much alive. And then we have... The uh, Calgary Flames, the Edmonton Oilers, the Los Angeles Kings, the Vegas Golden Knights, the Vancouver Canucks, and the San Jose Sharks are all there. Seattle Kraken in their first season have been eliminated, and my Ducks have also been eliminated from the Stanley Cup playoffs, so they do not have a chance to get in. The NBA is already within their playoffs. It just started last night with all these, uh, you know, something they adopted during the bubble, the play-in games, and they've continued that. So we take a look back here at the playing game with Cleveland and Brooklyn. Brooklyn won that game, uh, so the Nets will be heading into the playoffs over the Cavaliers, and so that was 7th versus 8th, and so we will see uh, the Brooklyn Nets move on here. And then the Los Angeles Clippers, so 7th uh, Brooklyn, so Brooklyn will be the 7th seed. And then uh, for the L.A. Clippers at the Minnesota Timberwolves, Minnesota the 7th seed, and the Clippers the 8th. Uh, Minnesota is moving on 109-104, so they will be heading in to the playoffs on the Western Conference side. And then today, on April 13th, we'll see Charlotte at Atlanta. So we'll see Atlanta, the ninth place team in the East, Charlotte, the 10th place team at 7 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN to decide who goes to the playoffs. And, well, to, to decide, I should say, to decide who continues to play in here because it's it depends on who continues to move on here, the play-in is very unique, right? So there's teams that get a second crack at it depending on seating and whatnot. So uh, we will see uh, Minnesota and, uh, pardon me, not Minnesota. We'll see uh, San Antonio at New Orleans at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN. And then Thursday we have no games. And then Cleveland will get, uh, pardon me, Brooklyn is not done. Cleveland will get, uh, or Brooklyn is in. Cleveland will get another crack at it. So we'll get to see that. And the Clippers get another crack at it as well. So we'll see where all these teams shake out. Uh, For those of you trying to understand the play-in games for the NBA playoffs, to kind of let you know 
uh, what's going on in the frequently asked questions of the play-in tournament. And uh, because I don't feel like I adequately represented it well there and I can always get better, this is what it looks like. So this is what it is. Okay. The winner of the games yesterday earns a seventh seed and advances to the NBA playoffs. So the Brooklyn Nets are the seventh seed. The Minnesota Timberwolves are the seventh seed. So Brooklyn in the East has advanced to the NBA playoffs as the seventh seed. Minnesota in the West has advanced to the playoffs as a seventh seed. Today, we're looking for the teams that, uh, well, teams are fighting here to earn the eighth seed in advance to the NBA playoffs. So it's single elimination, right? Atlanta and Charlotte, New Orleans and San Antonio. And then we look at the winner of Charlotte and Atlanta playing the loser of Cleveland and Brooklyn. So that would be Cleveland. So Charlotte and Atlanta, whoever wins that game will play Cleveland to decide who, who gets the eighth seed in the East. And then we'll take a look at the West, San Antonio and New Orleans. The winner of San Antonio and New Orleans will play the Clippers to decide who gets the eighth seed in the West. So that's ultimately what it's going to look like. That's how it shakes out. So the team that the teams that won last night are the seventh seed. They're in. It's over. It's done. And now to figure out who the eighth seed is going to be, it's uh, it, it's you're not out of it if you're the eighth seed right now. You have a chance to continue on. So whoever wins this seven eight matchup, that team automatically it's win or go home. And so you know we still have life here for the Cavaliers and the Clippers. But besides that. You know, once you're done, you're done in this play-in tournament. So we'll see what shakes out. Whoever whoever wins between Charlotte and Atlanta still has to play Cleveland. Whoever wins between San Antonio and New Orleans still has to play the Los Angeles Clippers. So the Clippers have a better shot, and the Cavaliers have a—well, they have more life, I should say. They don't have a necessarily a better shot because it's all about matchups, but they have more life here despite losing yesterday. So we'll see how that shakes out as we head forward here in the NBA playoffs, but I'm excited. You know, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. I'm excited to see the teams that have already locked up their place in the NBA playoffs as it stands right now. And to let you know what the climate is of the NBA, currently we have our standings of who is already in here and who has locked up those top six seeds in the West and top six seeds in the East before this play-in went on. So, Miami is the number one seed in the East, followed by Boston, Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Toronto, and Chicago. And then we have in the West, number one seeded Phoenix, followed by Memphis, Golden State, Dallas, Utah, and Denver. So that's where we sit at. Minnesota is already in, like I said, and the Brooklyn Nets are already in. So now it's a fight to see who's going to win of the three teams remaining in the East and the free three teams remaining in the West. Those that were bumped out of the NBA playoffs, the Knicks, the Wizards, the Pacers, the Pistons, and the Magic in the East, the Lakers, the Kings, the Blazers, the Thunder, and the Rockets in the West. Sad to see how the Knicks showed some promise last year and maybe something to build upon, and they lost four games to one in their five-game series with the Atlanta Hawks, and now they're not even in the playoffs. They were the 11th best team in the East, finishing with a record of 37-45. and 45. So they had something that you thought maybe they could be building on, but ultimately they did not go anywhere, and they'll be staying at home for this one, which is very sad. To stay with professional basketball and take a look around the sports world to the WNBA and take a look at their draft here, I want to shout out to the WNBA's future and very excited about the, the teams and you know everything that's going to happen from here. Uh, Kentucky, and that's an uh, awesome experience. Really excited. Uh, Baylor, Ole Miss, Louisville, Oregon all had picks in the top five overall, so that's really awesome to see. The FGC, uh, FGCU, Florida Gulf Coast uh, University, to see them, that's really awesome to see them within all of that. And then, uh, you know, in round two, there's three rounds in the WNBA draft, for those that don't know. In round two, we saw LSU's pointer go at the first part of round two. And then we saw uh, Kristen Williams from UConn get drafted there, first UConn player off the board. And UConn ended up sending two players in round number two. And we got to see plenty of the ACC in round number 
Uh, two, we got to see Georgia Tech, a couple NC State, Virginia Tech, Louisville again coming out of the ACC and heading to the WNBA. And in round three from Jackson State, Williams Holiday was the first pick of round three, 25th overall. So shout out to her. And then uh, Maya Dodson from Notre Dame went second in the third round. We had players drafted from South Dakota, Mali, Hawaii, Delaware, North Florida, IUPUI, Australia. So really cool. And uh, Kiara Smith from Florida was the final pick of this year's WNBA draft. So a shout out to everybody that was drafted and uh, big ups to the WNBA on their future and everything that is to come. Atlanta only had, uh, or part yeah, no, Atlanta in this draft only had one pick and that was the number one overall pick. So got to make it count with Howard out of Kentucky. Uh, Chicago did not have any picks in this year's draft. Uh, Connecticut had a couple here, and so they had uh, Michigan State's uh, Cloudin went to them. Uh, Nia went there out of Michigan State, and then they had two more picks, uh, Jordan Lewis and Kiara Smith, Kiara, who I just mentioned. So Connecticut got three picks in this year's draft, and then we saw Dallas got uh, a few picks out of this one as well taking Veronica Burton from Northwestern, seventh overall, and then going and getting Jasmine Dickey and Jazz Bond. One of my favorite names that I've ever seen in any sport, Jazz Bond, out of North Florida in the third round. And then we see Indiana in this year's draft had a bunch of picks. Indiana had uh, multiple picks here overall here. Uh, crazy. Indiana had four picks in the first round and then one in the second two in the third. So Indiana definitely building toward their future in this draft, uh, drafting out of Baylor, Louisville, Stanford, uh, two players out of Baylor, and then Stanford and Louisville in the first round, uh, South Carolina pick in the second round, Williams Holiday from Jackson State in the third round, and then, you know, out of Indiana, keeping somebody home, Pat Berg in the round number three. So Indiana definitely building in this draft. Uh, L.A. in this one here. They had a bunch of picks as well, two in the second, one in the third, one in the first. Out of Tennessee, they took Ray Burrell, and from there, they went on to take players out of Louisville, Yukon, and Hawaii, and uh, Kiana Smith, as well as Olivia Nelson, Odata, and, uh, and then we have Amy Atwell out of Hawaii that went there in the WNBA draft for L.A., and then for Las Vegas. Las Vegas had a bunch of picks as well. Two in the first, two in the second, one in the third. And so uh, they took Maya Hollingshed out of Colorado, eighth overall, and then took Kirsten Bell out of Florida Gulf Coast in the first round as well. And Pointer and Shepard both went to them in the second round out of LSU and Virginia Tech, respectively. And then another player out of LSU, uh, Faustine, went in round number three to Las Vegas. Minnesota inside of the WNBA draft had Kaya Jones went out of NC State in the second round, and then they had a third round pick out of South Dakota. So uh, no first round picks for Minnesota. And then New York, we saw them in the first round, fifth overall, take Sabali out of Oregon. And then later on out of Mali, they had Asika in the third round. And then for the Phoenix team here, we have Dodson, uh, which was really there they were only pardon me they had two picks in round number three and so two picks in round three out of Notre Dame and IUPUI took Maya Dodson out of Notre Dame and then Macy Williams out of IUPUI going to Phoenix Seattle love seeing a team in Seattle because I missed the supersonics on the men's side Seattle had three picks in the second round and one in the third drafting out of Australia Yukon Georgia Tech and NC State and then we see here Washington out of uh, this draft got one in the first round and one in the second round. Uh, Shakira Austin out of Ole Miss, third overall. And then Kristen Williams out of UConn, the second pick of the second round. So that's a look at what each team took. And like I said, only one team who did not have a pick in this year's draft, and that's Chicago. And then Indiana, who had the majority of this year's draft, it felt like, for the WNBA. So that's a look around all of this. Good morning to Mike. And then uh, Greg said, any thoughts regarding the women attempting to glue herself to the floor of the Clippers game last night? Uh, good morning to my mom as well. Uh, Greg, that's that's a fantastic question. 
and uh, I appreciate it. So let me uh, address that before we start our, our video on fantasy football. I do want to make a note, though, a promise is a promise, right? And I said we'd talk about the NHL, the NBA, the WNBA, and Major League Baseball, and we've talked about all of that except for Major League Baseball. We'll get more in depth with Papa Joe tomorrow, but just to let you know about what's going on in the Major League Baseball world, obviously, a week ago we had opening day. A week ago tomorrow is, it was opening day, and uh, very early on here, the Rays are 4-1. and one. Looking at the teams that uh, have, have started out, Chicago's 3-1, and one, Houston's 4-1, and one, uh, Chicago Cubs, St. Louis Cardinals both 3-1, and one, Colorado Rockies are 4-1. and one. So nobody's undefeated in, in these first five games of the season for any of these teams. No one is undefeated. And we have multiple teams with one loss. Uh, the National League East has no teams with one loss. So uh, the Mets are 4-2. and two. The Phillies are 3-2. and two. So something to look at there. And my Diamondbacks won opening day and then lost four in a row. So that's par for the course for me, I guess. I don't know. I don't want to be sad, but I'm a little sad. <laughs> so that's where we're at right now. My, my Diamondbacks are 1-4. and four. But yeah, so the woman glued herself to the court of the Clippers Timberwolves game, wore a shirt that said Glenn Taylor roasts animals alive. She was referring to an egg farm that Glenn Taylor has that had recently killed chickens because of the bird flu outbreak that has been happening. So yeah, it, it, so it was a protest, Greg. And yeah, I, uh, very exciting. During the Clippers Timberwolves game in Minnesota in the second quarter of the play in tournament game that I mentioned before, she was escorted off after attempting to glue herself to the floor during the play in game. That's a new one for me. So, according to the uh, TNT sideline reporter Allie LaForce, security guards said the woman glued herself to the floor by her wrists and refused to lift her wrists up. And following the incident, a global glass, grassroots network of animal rights activists named Direct Action Everywhere claimed responsibility for the protest, saying in a press release it was in response to an alleged animal rights issue at Timberwolf owner Glenn Taylor's egg farm. So this is not only an egg farm and not only a farmer, but the owner of the Timberwolves, Glenn Taylor, that they were doing this against. Uh, this took with 334 remaining in the second quarter. Uh, Timberwolves forward Jarrett Vanderbilt was attempting free throws at the under, other end of the court. Minnesota was trailing 45 to 38 and very seen. I mean, the thing is, how does the woman, again, just like with the guy at the Dome a couple seasons ago, I think it was, what, three seasons ago? How does somebody get on the court, number one? Right? How does somebody get on the court or the field? It doesn't make you feel safe, right? If you're a player, if you're, I mean, if you're anybody, if somebody can get out into a game, right, and show up on the court, where was security? So, you know, that's my first question. My second question is how did this woman get glue, bring glue into, I mean, I guess it's not going to go off in a metal detector, but very strange. So he, she comes in and glues her wrists to the court. That's a new one for me. Very strange and uh, interesting. But it was to protest Glenn Taylor's egg farm. So that's something. And I think, it, you know, they, they, you know, usually when something tragic happens, right? Well, I shouldn't say usually, but sometimes when something tragic happens, somebody will claim, right? There's a, there's an activist group that'll be like, yeah, that was us. And they're like proud of something negative. And usually it's with the death of people, right? So, you know, this terrorist group claims that, that they did this and they're so proud and it's heartbreaking and it's disgusting. And it's a horrible, horrible sign of, of inhumanity. But this is a unique one because instead of a terrorist group saying, hey, yeah, we did it. This is a, an animal activist group going, yes, we did it. Which, why would you announce yourself? Because this woman's already going to get in trouble, probably going to get fined, was detained. Maybe she was thrown in jail for a few hours. Who knows? And on top of all of that, now that you're the group that's saying, yeah, we did this, we're proud of this, now you could be fined. So it's just uh, interesting to me, the situation. But what are my thoughts on it? 
it's strange. How do I feel about it? Uh, I mean, Greg, this world, in so many ways, stuns me. And it's never good lately. And so, like, I, you know, humanity is, is really taking an all-time low. And and uh, I feel like I if I see anybody building an ark soon, I'm gonna gonna try and make sure that 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 God and I are are all clear and and anything I've done wrong, I can write my path and write my ship because I feel like somebody might be building an ark soon. Uh, Michael said thoughts on the state of SU men's lacrosse team. Can they win the ACC to get in the NCAA tournament? You know we'll see. You know I I, I think looking at the the ACC standings for you know, men's and women's lacrosse, you know, that's the thing is first and foremost, the men's team has been incredible, right? And this is the first season when Gary Gate is the head coach on the men's side. He's an alum of, of the men's side of things. And it's also crazy to see that in the ACC, there's only five teams that are competing in men's lacrosse, nuts. And so uh, Virginia's 4-0, and Syracuse is 1-2 and in the conference right now. They, have, they obviously have, have to get on better footing there and find a way to get back to it. But, you know, as it stands right now, anything is possible, right? Somebody catches fire at the right time, and anything can happen. So, you know, there's a hope that the men can figure things out and get back on the better side of things. But as it stands right now in Gary Gates' first season, conference-wise, they're struggling a bit, you know. And, and uh, just uh, strange there to only see five teams on the men's side. On the women's side, though, we have the team at 5-1 and one, Syracuse. In the women's lacrosse standings, the only team better than them, North Carolina, Duke, BC, and Syracuse are all 5-1 and one in women's lacrosse. So that's even more of the story that the women are catching fire right now. Uh, Greg said beyond strange, she seemed like she was a venue worker, I guess. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's that's something interesting. I don't know, did, you know, did they pay her? Uh, is she really an activist for them? Does she care? You know, it was... Was she, I, I don't want to prognosticate what her feelings could have been. It's just a really weird situation to see somebody glue themselves to the ground. And I mean, if she's a worker, then it makes more sense of her access to it. Makes you feel maybe a little bit safer that she wasn't just some random human being walking down the stairs and running onto the court. But, you know, I mean, I can honestly say that I've shot a bunch of free throws in my day and never with a woman glued to the ground. So, you know, there's a first time for everything. But that being said, we'll take a step aside for a fast break on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports meets life. When we come back, we'll wrap up this first hour and jump in hour number two as we head to our NFL Draft coverage. This NFL Draft coverage will be with you the next three Wednesdays, including today and throughout the draft. So, my NFL people, the NFL Draft coverage starts today as Mike Sofka of Hall of Fame FantasyFootball.com and I break down the 2022 NFL Draft we look at different positions, today's quarterbacks and running backs. Then next week, we'll have more. Then the week after that, we'll have our mock draft as we will be drafting on screen in real time. And, we'll, and you'll, be able to see, you'll be able to see what we're doing in the draft, which is really awesome, and I'm excited about that. And then from there, for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of the draft, Mike and I will be doing draft casts, giving you our thoughts instantaneously in the moment. So a lot of great stuff coming up between the next three Wednesdays of prepping you for the draft, then being within the draft itself, and then coming out of the draft. So we're excited to share that with you and always look forward to it. So with that being said, we'll take a step aside inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios, and we'll be back right after this fast break where sports meets life on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Carvel DeWitt, it's what happy tastes like. Do you know why? Because we make ice cream. Creamy, rich, flavorful ice cream. Not yogurt or iced milk like some of our competitors. Ice cream. Fresh, by hand, daily. For the calorie conscious, we have something new for you. Our new Carvelite. Same great flavor, creaminess, and texture of our regular ice cream with only 35 calories an ounce. So whether you want an ice cream cake, flying saucer, dasher, Carvelanche, hard or soft ice cream, we will satisfy your craving with our fresh, handmade, regular, or new Carvelite ice cream. Carvel DeWitt. It's what happy tastes like. Cafe Cabal offers same-day local delivery of our products, offering no delivery charge for Onondaga County. 
shopcafecabal.com for fresh roasted coffee beans, cold brew, travel mugs, and all your essential Cafe Cabal needs. Cafe Cabal, coffee for the soul. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is located on 3680 Milton Avenue in the Home Depot Plaza. It is your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant. Folks, some sports bars aren't family-friendly. Some family-friendly restaurants are not sports bars. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is proud to be both. It is that marriage that you've been looking for for years. The Wildcat Sports Pub is your home base for your sports bar and restaurant needs, games for the kids, indoor and outdoor activities, and enough things on the menu to come back every single week and get to try something new. They're open Sundays from noon to 8 p.m., Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to midnight. For reservations and party information, call 315 315- 487-2222 for the Wildcat family-friendly sports pub and restaurant. Cafe Cabal offers same-day local delivery of our products. Offering no delivery charge for Onondaga County. Shop CafeCabal.com for fresh roasted coffee beans, cold brew, travel mugs, and all your essential Cafe Cabal needs. Cafe Cabal, coffee for the soul. Pa's Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory remind us that every day is worth celebrating. Find them at 201 Old 7th North Street in Liverpool, New York. Open Monday through Saturday in store and all the time online at maandpazpopcorn.com. Serving our Central New York community and beyond, you can order all throughout the country at maandpazpopcorn.com. And remember to get your tins, which have in store half price refills forever. Ma and Pa's Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory available to you for fundraising and all of your events by calling 315-450-6272. That's 315-450-6272. Mon Paz Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory. How corny are you? The Millhouse Market. Located on 3790 New York 13 in Pulaski, New York, is worth the drive every time. Make sure you make your way out to the Millhouse Market every Tuesday through Sunday for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And going to the Millhouse Market is an experience all in and, in and of itself. They have their drive through pickup window where you can grab your food and go. Contactless pay on the app. Go to the Millhouse Market app on the Apple app or Google Play store. You can see their entire menu, all their ingredients, everything there at your fingertips. Order your food utilize contactless pay, tip on the app, and get emailed in approximate time that your food will be ready to pick up in the drive through window. You can also call 315-298-4104. That's 315-298-4104 to get to the Millhouse Market and get everything set up for you as well for catering as along with ordering for your lunch or dinner, bringing something home to the family, bringing something over to work. So many different ways to interact with the Millhouse Market for catering as well as for your order pickup. You can 
get to the indoor dining as well and celebrate what it's like to be inside of the Millhouse Market and see everything that they have done as they have consistently upgraded the inside of it. It looked beautiful before, but they continue to push themselves during the pandemic proactive saying, what else can we do? How can we make this look even greater? I love the wood finish that's everywhere and the wood floors and the general store with local products from local companies. I bought the honeys there. I bought the syrups there. I bought the different spices to utilize in my kitchen. They have soaps there for you as well and jewelry and whatnot. So from the general store to the drive through window to catering to dining in, the Millhouse Market is so many things in one place, and they are absolutely positively linked to our community of Pulaski and Central and Upstate New York and worth the drive every time to 3790 New York 13 in Pulaski, New York. We'll see you there. With that being said, here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports meets life, we're going to end this video and start a new one and jump right into the Fantasy Football Power Hour. So for those of you that are here with us on Facebook and YouTube, you'll see this video ends and a new one will begin. So that video is going to begin on Facebook.com backslash live now DT, and I will share it on Facebook.com backslash wake up call DT because we utilize both these avenues on Facebook. And of course, those of you that are here with us on YouTube, jump over to Facebook and we'll be sharing this on YouTube after the fact. And I can't wait to see you there. So we appreciate you. We thank you for everything. We can't wait to hang out with you on our Fantasy Football Power Hour. I want to thank everybody for tuning in every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time on YouTube.com, Facebook.com, and MixLR.com, all backslash wake up call DT. Facebook.com backslash live now DT and on wakeupcalldt.com's homepage. You can find Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora's archives by going to Stitcher, TuneIn, Podbean, iHeartRadio, Spotify, MixLR, YouTube, iTunes, and Apple Podcasts by searching Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora or one word, Wake Up Call DT. And of course, a thanks to our central and upstate New York partners and beyond Cafe Kubal, Carvel DeWitt, The Wildcat Sports Pub, PBJ's Lunchbox. Honda City of Liverpool, Avicoli's, Mon Paz, Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory, Canine Camp Dog Daycare, The Millhouse Market, Canine Campground Dog Boarding, Pizza Man, Victory Sports Medicine and Orthopedics, Chick-fil-A Cicero and Chick-fil-A Clay, and Mother's Cupboard. And of course, Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora is your exclusive multimedia marketing partner of your... <music> college dolphins it is fins up every single month on wake up call with dan tortora and you'll get our dolphin time like today every wednesday at 9 a.m eastern time first and third wednesdays with ad and dt second and fourth wednesdays with the dolphin dive which today was jeff lonzak telling the story of the former lemoyne player on the men's tennis side to former lemoyne assistant coach to now in his seventh season as the lemoyne men's and women's tennis head coach so three stints with lemoyne and continuing to be successful throughout all of them so a big shout out to jeff lonzak who joins us here who joined us here today the dolphin dive and ad and dt specials like i said airing every wednesday at 9 a.m eastern time opposite one another so first and third wednesday ad and dt second and fourth wednesday dolphin dive inside of dolphin time wednesdays at 9 a.m exclusively on wake up call with dan tortora catch all of our lemoyne content on the wake up call dt.com website clicking on lemoyne and of course on youtube.com backslash wake up call dt make sure you click subscribe and get more information on the dolphins by going to lemoynedolphins.com <music> Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora is also the proud multimedia marketing partner of your Marywood University Pacers. It is Pacer Pride every single month, and we just did an unprecedented eSports broadcast. The entire show broadcasted from inside of an eSports headquarters, and not just any eSports headquarters, the one at Marywood University, which is extremely amazing. I wanted to make it my studio. I wanted to set up there every day. I wanted to continue to utilize the equipment and learn from everybody there. Jacob Adler and the entire team with eSports at Mary. What awesome. Sister Mary Persico, fantastic with wanting to bring that there. And of course, big ups and a big shout out to Pat Murphy, the executive director of athletics. So a lot of great stuff with 
Marywood Esports. Definitely go back and watch that special on Facebook.com backslash Wake Up Call DT. And we just aired it on YouTube.com backslash Wake Up Call DT. So make sure you check it out. As you get to see me play a game I've never played before, and I only lost by one point to the director of esports, Jacob Adler. So to me, that's a victory because I respect it, you know. So peace or pride every every uh, Friday, part of me, at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. And, of course, specials throughout the year, like the one we did for the Marywood Esports headquarters yesterday. And, of course, you can check out our Pacer content by clicking on the Marywood tab on wakeupcalldt.com. And, of course, you can also go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com backslash wakeupcalldt, to get more from the Marywood Pacers and our exclusive content. And you can always go to marywoodpacers.com for their schedule and everything else. The Brian and Stratton Bobcats of Syracuse are also proud exclusive multimedia marketing partners of Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. The Bobcat buzz comes to you every single month throughout the month, celebrating the stories of student athletes, coaches, and administration within Brian and Stratton College of Syracuse. We are going to be able to do some incredible things here coming up. We've already done a lot of great stuff in less than two months, or no, just two, two months and some change of working together. The Bobcats are going to be with us on site, on location, for the first time ever, Tuesday, April 19th from 9 to 11 for the entire show uh, at Cafe Kubal on 401 South Salina Street. I will be joined in downtown Syracuse by Alex Grigorita, the women's soccer head coach, assistant AD, and national champion Alex Grigorita coming to us from Moldova, which is over in Eastern Europe. He'll be joining us for a live on-site broadcast as Brian and Stratton meets Cafe Kubal for the first time ever. Come out, grab a cup of coffee and tea, and see us there this Tuesday, April 19th. And, of course, for all your Bobcat buzz, you can go to our YouTube.com backslash Wake Up Call DT channel and click subscribe. And you can find us on the BSC SYR tab on Wake Up Call DT Dot com. For more information on the Bobcats, go to syracuse.bscbobcats.com. With that being said, here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports meets that thing called life, I want to thank you for finding us on social media. If you haven't yet, please do. Facebook at Wake Up Call DT, Twitter at Call DT, Instagram at Wake Up Call underscore DT. For Jeff Lonzak and for the Lemoyne College Dolphins, for you and for Cafe Kubal, we thank you so much for tuning in. Head to maandpazpopcorn.com anywhere in the country and order, and you'll have it delivered right to your doorstep. A fantastic opportunity from fantastic people with flavors that you wouldn't even think of. Just awesome, awesome experience. I love Ma and Paz, so make sure you head out there today. And definitely looking forward to doing a lot of crazy, awesome stuff with them, as we always do. And we're going to be announcing our winner from the NCAA. Uh, we had our March Madness second chance bracket, and we have a winner in Central New York. We'll be announcing that today on our social media, so stay close for that. And in the meantime, make sure you follow us over to facebook.com backslash live now DT for fantasy football content of the NFL draft as Mike Sofka and I break down the quarterbacks and the running backs in this year's draft. As always, God bless, no stress, do your best. We'll talk with you over there very soon, momentarily, and I look forward to it.